this um, I'm going to discuss is the Renaissance art or the um, Renaissance period no? na art. So, way back dun sa ating lesson, um, previous lesson on the Renaissance period, uh, music of the Renaissance period, alam natin na that on this period is the period of discoveries, inventions, yung mga ganyan. Kung naalala ninyo, doon sa period na yun, na invento yung printing press, and many more na nakatulong talaga sa mga tao no? to develop their skills in arts like music and painting, sculpture, and many more. So this is um, the arts of the Renaissance period. So for this morning, we have our objectives. Number one is to understand the characteristics of artworks produced in Renaissance period. We also have here reflect on and derive the mood, idea, or message emanating from selected artworks of the Renaissance period. Create an artwork guided by techniques and styles of Renaissance. Number five is to share ideas about the influences of icons belonging to the Renaissance art on the evolution of art forms. Number six, show the influences of the Renaissance art traditions to Philippine art forms. Number seven, Use artworks to derive the traditions, history of the Renaissance period. So those are our seven objectives for this topic. So we have here our introduction. So I will just um, show you a video presentation about the overview of the Renaissance period on this link. Okay? Um, the period of the Renaissance art. So Renaissance art, this era is... Uh, full of great artistic and intellectual achievement with the birth of secular art that focuses on realistic and humanistic art. So pagdating natin sa Renaissance period, medyo nag-iba no? yung kanilang theme or center ng kanilang artworks. Although meron pa rin siyang halo, katulad ng sa medieval period, na halo nilang theme is like uh, more on religion, focuses on Catholicism, mga ganyan. Pero dito, more on realism na yung technique or yung style sa kanilang mga artworks. Like, kapag sinabi natin realism, this is more detailed or highly detailed na mga um, artworks. No? So, it is characterized also by accurate anatomy, scientific perspective, and deeper. So, pagdating ni Renaissance period, magkakahalo na to yung um, iba't ibang subjects na iyahalo sa isang artwork. Like, for example, mathematics, science, and art. So, yung tatlong yon are the main subjects sa mga artworks ng Renaissance period. So, painters during this era depicted real-life figures and their sculpture are naturalistic portraits of human beings. So, mamaya, makikita ninyo yung mga artworks, especially yung mga kilalang artworks natin hanggang ngayon, like Mona Lisa, The Last Supper, and many more. And this one, architecture was characterized by its symmetry and balance. Kaya makikita nga natin dito yung mga mathematical forms or figures is kahalo talaga sa mga artworks ng Renaissance period. So this is a period of artistic experimentation as what I've said earlier. So St. Peter's Basilica in Rome was the greatest cathedral building. And alam naman natin na sa St. Peter's Basilica nakalagi ang ating Santo Papa. So, let's proceed to the greatest Renaissance artists and their artwork. So, apat lang yung i-discuss natin ditong um, artists ano, together with their artwork. So, number one, we have here Michelangelo. Number two, Leonardo da Vinci. Number three is Raphael. And the last artist is Donatello. So, yung i-discuss lang natin dito is yung kanilang um, kumbaga summary ng kanilang Life as an artist and their artworks. So, dun muna tayo kay Michael Angelo. So, he is an Italian sculptor, painter, architect, and poet. So, those are his professions. He was also known as the greatest living artist in his lifetime. So, some of his famous works are Pieta, Bacchus, Moses, Dying Slave, Dawn, and Dust. So, he is also the most, or one of the most influential no pagdating sa artist that, or sa arts that time and one of his most influential works in fresco is the altar or or the altar wall altar wall or the ceiling of and the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in Rome so makikita nyo doon sa Sistine um, Chapel doon sa ceiling noon is yung nine scenes 
from the book of Genesis or the book of creation. So two of his best known works, the Pieta and David, were sculpted before he turned 30. So ganun um, kabata si Michelangelo nang nagawa niya yung kanyang dalawang best sculpture which is, which is the Pieta and David. So this is the Pieta or the sculpture of Pieta. This is a portrayal of pain had been connected with the idea of redemption as represented by the seated Madonna which is the female no? and the male on this on his or on her arms is the body of Christ. So this is the sculpture Pieta. So next one, one of his most famous work is the Gallery of Sistine Chapel ceiling. So it is um, painted by Michelangelo in four years, no, between 1508 and 1512. It is one of the most renowned artworks of the High Renaissance. So central to the ceiling, which is ito, yung parte na yan, those are the scenarios na sinasabi ko sa inyo from the Book of Genesis or the Book of Creation. And itong nasa pinakang gitna, kung makikita ninyo, this is um, the scenario na nilikha ng Diyos si Adan. Okay? So, makikita nyo dito, um, itong tao na to, which is gray-bearded person, this is God, together with the angels, then inaabot ni God yung kamay ni Adam to give his life. Okay? So, yan yung um, gallery of Sistine Chapel ceiling. Makikita rin natin dito, Yung iba't ibang senaryo sa Old Testament like si Jonas and yung whale, yung mga ganyan, yung mga ninuno no, ni Jesus, makikita rin natin sa mga senaryo dito sa Gallery of Sistine Chapel ceiling. So next one, another sculpture by Michelangelo is the Moses. So you can see this scenario from the book of Exodus chapter 34. So this one or this sculpture is made of course by Michelangelo housed in the church of San Pietro in Vincoli. In Rome. So this is commissioned in 1505 by Pope Julius II for his tomb. Next artist we have is Leonardo da Vinci. So ito yung isa sa talagang kilalang kilala natin ano? na painter and also he is not just a painter. He is also an architect, a scientist and mathematician. So yung kanyang mga profession, yun yung kumbaga inintegrate niya to make his artworks. No? So number one, um, he was also known as the ultimate renaissance man, so that is his title, because of his intellect, interest, talent, and expression of humanist and classical values. So the Last Supper is his famous work and the most produced religious painting of all time. So yun yung makikita natin sa Bible then sa scenario that time, na kung saan yun yung last meal ni Jesus together with his disciple. At makikita natin sa painting na nag-uusap-usap yung mga disciple kasi dun yung panahon na inireveal ni Jesus na meron ngang magkakanulo sa kanya na isa sa kanya mga disipulo. Kaya kung makikita nyo sa reaction nung nasa painting, no, parang nagulat or nasyak yung mga disciple. And thinking kung sino nga ba talaga yung magkakanulo sa kanilang guru or sa kanilang Panginoon that time. So Mona Lisa is another painting by Leonardo da Vinci. This is the most famous and most parodied portrait. So napakaraming kwento behind that um, painting. Ano? So other works are the Vitruvian Mana, the Adoration of the Magi, Virgin of the Rocks, and etc. So this is the painting Mona Lisa. So the Mona Lisa is a half-length portrait painting by Leonardo da Vinci. Considered an archetypal masterpiece of the Italian Renaissance, it has been described as the best known, the most visited, the most written about, the most sung about, the most parodied work of art in the world. So those are some of the categories or some of the titles na nakuha ng painting na ito by Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, so may kita mo dito sa painting ano, na parang nakatingin talaga siya sa'yo kapag tiningnan mo siya ng titigan. So that is Mona Lisa. Next one is the Vitruvian Mana. So this is a drawing, of course, by um, Leonardo da Vinci. So you can see here yung pagka -integ or yung um, integration nung kanyang mga profession like mathematics for the angles, linear proportions, di ba? So may kita mo dyan. And also science, since Leonardo da Vinci is a scientist, so may kita mo rin dito yung halo ng science for the anatomy or the body of the drawing. Okay, so ayan, so kitang-kita ninyo yung pagka highly detailed ano nung 
um, drawing na to. So, this is not literal na um, apat yung kamay and apat yung paa. Pinapakita lang dito yung um, perspective na dalawang position nung um, tao na nandun sa drawing. Okay? In a circle and in a square. So, ito yung parte ng square. No? Yung kung saan nakatayo siyang straight, then yung straight din yung kamay niya. So, yan yung nasa square. So, yung nasa circle naman is itong parang nakabuka yung kanyang kamay at yung paa. So, that is the Vitruvian Mana made by Leonardo da Vinci. And another um, artwork of Leonardo da Vinci is the Adoration of the Magi. So, ito naman, scenario na to is nasa Bible. Ito yung sinaselebrate natin every January, which is the Three Kings. No? So, diyan yung Adoration of the Magi. So, next one, let's proceed to the third um, artist that we have here. So, Raphael, ito rin yung um, tinaguri ang katunggali talaga no, ni Leonardo da Vinci. So, he's also an Italian painter. Anyway, lahat naman ng i-discuss nating apat na um, artist ngayon is Italian. Since yung Renaissance period niya is more on talagang sa Italian na kumbaga na iborn or na isilang. No? So, Italian painter and architect of the high Renaissance period. So, he is admired for his clarity of form, ease of composition, and for his visual achievement in interpreting the divine and Christian doctrine. So, dito siya nakilala sa kanyang mga artworks, which has clarity of form, is of composition, and also he has a unique craftsmanship and compositional skills. Famous works are the Sistine Madonna, the School of Athens, and the Transfiguration. So, those are some of his most famous artworks. So, number one, we have here the Sistine Madonna. So, it is also called the Madonna di San Sisto, This is an oil painting by Raphael. So this painting was commissioned by Pope Julius II in 1512 for the Church of San Sisto Piacenza. So the canvas was one of the last Madonnas painted by Raphael. So next artwork we have here is the School of Athens. So dito naman sa painting na to, or sa artwork na to, na the School of Athens. This is a fresco, no? F fresco by Raphael. So, this was painted between 1509 and 1511. So, ito ay ginawa para pang-decorate dun sa room na kilala bilang ngayon Stanze de Raffaello sa Apostolic Palace in the Vatican. So, dito may kita nyo yung iba't ibang philosophers like Aristotle, Pythagoras, yan, nandyan sila na nag-uusap-usap and nagbabasa ng libro about nga sa philosophy. So, may kita nyo rin dito yung highly detailed na um, sculpture ni Apollo. So, makikita nyo rin dito na may halo talaga siyang mathematics because of the cross-shape na um, design or architecture. No? So, yan yung the school of Athens. So, next one is the Transfiguration, another painting by Raphael. So, this is, uh, or this was commissioned by Cardinal Giulio de' Medici, the later Pope Clement VII, and conceived as an altar piece for the Narbonne Cathedral in France. So, Raphael worked on it until his death in 1520. So, this is the Transfiguration. This, uh, mababasa nyo rin to sa Book of Luke, no, na kung saan is nagbagong anyo si Jesus at uh, nagdamit ng as in puti at sobrang liwanag. So, kasama niyo yung kanyang um, alagad. No? So, yan yung um, the Transfiguration. And the last artist we have is Donatello. Unlike the three artists na nauna, na na-discuss natin, na nakilala talaga sa painting, ito naman si Donatello is nakilala sa kanyang sculpture. So he is an Italian great renaissance sculptor from Florence, Italy. So known for his work in bas-relief, which is a form of shallow relief sculpture. So the statues and relief works done are David, St. George statue, equestrian mo uh, monument of Geta Malata, Prophet Habakkuk, and the Feast of Herod. So, characterized by Gothic elements like long, graceful forms and ornamental detail, and many more. So, later on, he showed a decisive move away from Gothic to a more classical technique. So, his works became dramatic and emotional which show realism and has a three-dimensional effect on a flat surface. So, he um, also invented and perfected the schiacciato or the flattened-out technique. So he spent his life on reliefs of various churches in his twilight years. He drew inspiration from classical figures and nudes. His figures were starkly real and vividly 
emotional. So let's proceed to the artworks of Donatello. So number one, we have here the sculpture, um, David. So this is the title of two statues of the biblical hero, David by the Italian um, early Renaissance sculptor Donatello. So ito yung literal talaga no, na kumalaban kay um, Goliath. So dito, um, na-interpret ni Donatello that um, ayan, this is a nude sculpture except for this hat and this boots. Okay, so this is the David um, sculpture by Donatello. So it dates um, to the 1440s or later. Next one is the Feast of Herod made of bronze. Okay, so this was created by Donatello in 1427. It appears on the baptistry of the Siena Cathedral in Italy. It is one of Donatello's earliest relief sculptures and his first bronze relief. This sculpture is noted for Donatello's use of perspective and the piece of this um, sculpture is 60 by 60 centimeters. So this is the Feast of Herod. And the last one we have is the prophet Habakkuk or Zucon. So Lo Zucon, which translates from Italian as idiot or dimwit, is the popular name given to a marble statue by Donatello. So kanina, yung Feast of Herod is from bronze, ito namang Zucon or etong prophet Habakkuk is from marble. So it was commissioned for the bell tower of the Cathedral of Florence, Italy and completed between 1423 and 1425. So quotation by Leonardo da Vinci, learning is the only thing that the mind never exhausts, never fears, and never regrets. So that is the topic, Renaissance period, artworks, and the famous artists of the Renaissance era. Okay? So if you have questions, you can um, type it on the comment box ng sagayon is masagot natin yung inyong mga tanong. Okay, so thank you. This is the topic, Renaissance period. So I hope na makatulong to for your reviewer.